Hi, so I've been getting requests to do tops videos. So I'm gonna do sort of a series and hopefully let's get into it. So I've just got this sphere and I'm making it look like a rock with just attribute noise. Nice thing you can do with tops is wedging and that's what most people use it for. So what I'm gonna do is just randomize this offset value so I get a bunch of different rocks. Let's flip down a top net. And now if we dive in, we can do wedge. So what wedges is, is you tell it like, I want 10 work items, for example. Then you create an attribute, call it something. Matt Estelle says you should name your tops attributes, tops something. Otherwise it can get confusing, but I'll show you another way to make that a bit less confusing. Um, anyways, let's call it tops offset for now. Set it to float. There are many other possibilities and then could be a, a single value, a list of values, a bracket, or just go with the range and set it from minus 10,000 to like 10,000. If you click random samples, you'll get random samples. If you don't, you'll get uh, increments. So if I were to do like zero to 10, and since I've got 10 wedges, I would get like zero, one, two, three, like even increments but with random samples I, would, I could get like 0 0.5 2.7 that kind of stuff so go back to what i had previously now what do you do so if you right click you see here that it says generate node cook node cancel node dirty node okay so generate node means that it hasn't cooked but it gives you some information as to what the output might be and what kind of values you're getting. So this is a good way to sort of find out if when you run Tubnet, uh, it's gonna work or not. Here, just by generating, I can see that I've got one wedge attribute, which is tops offset that I've just created here. Uh, I'm doing 10 wedges. This wedge count is over here. Uh, wedge index is zero, because I'm on the first one. If I were to click here, I would get one, right? This is nine, this is the last one. Starts at zero, just like any other array. Uh, wedge num is in this case the same as the wedge index, and then wedge total is obviously in this case the same as the wedge count. And then you get the value of this tops offset, so 5000 something. If I click here, I get minus 5000 something. So you see when I've generated this node, you can see all my work items here, they are grayed out. Uh, if I were to code this, then they would they would be green, right? And so state is cooked. Uh, this is very quick, so you won't see it, but um, there are different states that your work items can be in, like cooking or waiting. Uh, in this case, you won't see that right now. The next step would be, okay, I wanna link this value to um, my very simple rock generator, right? So, Tops uses the add syntax, which can be confusing, but it's super easy to use. Basically, in what I want to randomize is this offset value. So what I can do is add tops offset. And now you see my rock has changed. And so if I cycle through my work items, you can now see that this value is being, uh, let's pin this. So you can now see that this value is being changed here. Uh, according to the value that this wedge is generating. Pro tip is that you can use the square brackets to go from one work item to the other instead of using, instead of clicking. The thing I mentioned with the uh, tops offset was that it's clearer if you prefix it with, with tops so you know where that attribute is coming from. But what you can do is call it just whatever you want to call it by using the top prefix and then you can here instead use p at offset and p basically is for pdg and that is to avoid any kind of confusion as to where this attribute comes from if i were to make a change here make this 5000 for example this isn't correct anymore and Stops isn't like stops where stop recooks automatically, so you have to do it yourself. What you want to do is dirty this node, which means okay, this node's been updated. So now the result I've 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 got 
is not right anymore so I'm dirtying this node and then I can recook to get a new set of value a new set of values that matches what I've updated it to be so now I get all these rocks should be cool p at offset works just fine so what I would say is use the p prefix that means you know it's topped the other thing you can do is instead of using the at syntax so if you have a big setup and pdg isn't running then you don't get a value for this and then that can break your setup and that can be kind of inconvenient so what pdg also lets you do is let me delete this channel reset it back to zero is you've got this target parameter checkbox so i can tick that and i can go pick my parameter here probably want to look at what that is called and I'm just going to copy this parameter offset and then paste it here okay, so now I've got the name of the parameter which is just offset so it should show up here yeah hey okay when I click the node you can't see the result anymore because it's not dynamic but if I look at my attributes here you can see that this parameter is set here is the offset channel so offset is the name of my attribute and channel is the the name that will give it and that means that when pdg actually runs it's going to push this parameter i mean this value to this parameter and that means that not now it's not actually interactive anymore but this won't break your setup so if you have a bigger setup and you just want to randomize it this is probably the best way to do it so let's go back to doing it like we were doing it before. So p at offset. Right now I can interactively look through my work items. And obviously this is all nice, but you might want to cache the result of every one of these. So go back to SOPs and I will append a rock geometry output to this. And so I want to call it uh, my rocks my rock uh, and then you sort of want to append something that will vary for each wedge right so you want to do add wedge index um, and obviously if, if you want to be like we can use the p um, so if I click here this work item is now active and if I um, middle mouse here it gives me my rock 2 because this is work item number 2 right you can see it here it evaluates correctly I can go inside of here and do rock fetch so rock fetch is sort of like one of the nodes you'll use the most and it just um, runs a, a rock so in this case we're gonna plug this in and the rock I want to run is the one um, I've just created it so I want to do cash rocks and I can just click and then paste it here there we go output files road node rock node parameters is what we want single frame because we're not doing a simulation here we are i've got my sphere i've got my mountain i've got different work items and let's cache them all to disks i don't have to dirty this i can just cook this so what do you cook node i see stuff is running so these ones are running these ones are done now I get all 10. Oh, we'll just do a file. And we'll copy this. And instead of doing wedge index here, I'm just gonna do $f. And now you see this is my first rock. And if I step through the timeline, you can see that I've got all my rocks here. So I should be able to go until... Well, the thing is, um, I've got one at frame zero here. So zero, one, two, three. And now you get all your rocks. The first steps with tops, I guess. Uh, I hope this was informative and there will be more videos coming. Yeah.